Hey guys, this is Nate Story with Bright Agritech, and today we're going to talk about the basics of hydroponic system design. So very briefly, we're going to go over the different kinds of hydroponic systems, the different parts of hydroponic systems, and what systems are probably right for you. Again, this is a brief overview, so if you want more in-depth information, go to Upstart University. So right off the bat, the primary parts of a hydroponic system are going to be your growing bed for most of these things, or your growing container of some kind, right, and a sump tank. And you are going to have a pump down here in your sump tank, and it's most simple form. Um, you're basically pumping up to your growing container, and it returns it to the sump tank. Three basic components, plumbing, plants, and sump. That's about it. In some uh, embodiments, including something called the Kratky method, it's simplified even further. In that method, you've basically just got a growing container, a plant that grows on the top here, with its roots dangling down in nutrient solution, and that's it. You mix the nutrient solution, you put it in, and over time, as the plant gets bigger, the water sinks down, and uh, by the time the plant is fully grown, the water is all consumed. That is the simplest possible method, a very, very amazing method, um, but uh, yeah. In its most simple form, this is what it looks like. In its most general form, this is closer to what it looks like. So when we talk about a sump tank, we're basically just talking about some type of a catchment, something down here that holds the water that we're circulating up into the growing, into the growing container, right? Uh, we've got plants growing up here, happy, happy plants, and they're getting watered constantly. Um, or on a timed interval or something, right? Something that ensures that they're getting solution to their roots. And all of that solution is coming from down here in the sump tank. The sump tank is also what a lot of people use for mixing their nutrients. So you actually have to add nutrients and add water on a regular basis. And most people use the sump tank for doing that. Now, in a different embodiment, uh, some of this uh, solution would flow to the sump tank and the sump tank would deliver it to basically a mixing tank which would deliver it to your uh, plant production container. Now this happens when you've got a lot of these in a row, okay, when you're using a ton of these when you're doing commercial production or large-scale hobby or home production, and it's not just this super simple little system at this point, you actually have a mixing tank full of a lot of solution over here. You might be auto-dosing, you might be doing something else, but ultimately it's slightly more complicated, but it's designed for bigger, bigger, bigger systems. So there are a ton of different systems out there for hydroponic growers. And I'm using a very generic uh, idea of a plant growing container. Ultimately, um, there, there are tons of, of different systems, different ways to hold the plants that are being grown. Um, there's something called DW, or not BWC, DWC, um, which is deep water culture. Deep water culture, DWC. Um, there's NFT, another very popular technique. This is nutrient film technique. There is um, vertical, um, something like zip grow. There is uh, aero, aeroponic techniques. And um, then there's just general uh, media based. And um, these are super broad categories. And if you're an advanced grow, you're probably sitting there, oh, you forgot this, you forgot that. Generally, most techniques fall under some of these categories. Um, this is really vertical. Um, so uh, the idea here is that under these general categories we have a lot of different techniques that, uh, that are possible, that are containing the plants, that are receiving nutrient solution, and um, are allowing our plants to take that water and those nutrients up and grow. So DWC is, is deep water culture. And it basically comprises of a raft with a uh, on, a, on top of a tank, this has nutrient solution in it. The plant floats on the tank, the roots dangle down in the solution, and solution is moved through this tank from a sump or from a mixing tank uh, very slowly. And this is this growing technique. It's basically what roots totally submerged in water. So NFT is nutrient film technique. And it basically comprises of a shallow trough with a thin film of water flowing through it. There's a covering on the trough, the plant grows out of the covering, and it dangles its roots and grows its roots down into this thin film of water that runs down the length of the gutter. So water flows in here, and it flows out down here. Very, very thin film, very, very slowly, 
And uh, this is a really, really great technique. It's related to aeroponic techniques, but it's the most common greenhouse technique for growing things like greens and herbs in big, flat, single plane horizontal uh, production facilities. So vertical production techniques, um, the one that we use the most is of course zip grow. Um, and this is anything that is uh, basically a tower system, right, where we're growing plants in three dimensional space. And um, it could be multiples of these towers. We use the zip grow, which is a single face tower. And uh, basically what, we are, what we're doing is we're thinking about our growing environment in terms of three dimensional space as opposed to the traditional single plane production techniques. So uh, vertical is becoming a more and more important growing technique, especially for indoor growers who want to maximize their space use efficiency. So the other, uh, another technique is aeroponic. So aeroponic basically describes the, uh, the production of plants in air primarily. And so what this represents is traditionally like something like an A-frame where you have these plants growing out of this A-frame. Um, there are all sorts of embodiments here. Um, where the plant roots hang down in the air and they are misted by nozzles up here and um, those roots just kind of get misted with this very thin uh, mist of nutrient solution. So they're growing mostly in air. It's great oxygen exchange. However, the root zone can heat up very quickly if you don't have great environmental controls and it's never really been effective at commercial scales. The final technique, and this is one of the most common ones on smaller scales, is media-based technique. Um, and this could be uh, gravel beds, this could be, um, you name it. This is any time we're using an inert media, some type of aggregate, some type of fiber, and we are growing a plant basically in a um, growing container. The plant grows out, we've got roots dangling down into this aggregate, this media, and um, usually it's attached to a sump, as per our original uh, kind of diagram up there of a hydroponic system. Now the great thing about this system is it gives the plants great root support so the plants can hold themselves up. It gives great biofiltration if you're doing organic hydro or aquaponics. And it's usually a really, really simple technique to embrace if you've never done hydroponics before. So deciding which system is best for you is a hard decision. And it depends on a lot of different variables and factors. It depends on kind of the scale you want to do it at. Are you doing it just for fun or commercially? Uh, what types of crops are you interested in growing? Are you doing it outdoors or indoors? These are all really important questions to ask if you want to understand what technique is going to be ideal. I would say that if you want to do that, you need to be digging into like coursework at USU, checking out some of the other resources online, and making sure that you're really well educated on all these techniques, because if you aren't, then you're likely to make the wrong decision. So the trends that we've seen over the years are for very small home and hobby, either zip grow or media-based techniques. For uh, larger scale commercial, uh, if, if space is uh, precious to you, definitely something like zip grow. If you're in the tropics, um, something like uh, DWC becomes a little bit more feasible. And if you're in more temperate environments uh, for greenhouses, uh, something like NFT. If you're growing indoors and you're trying to maximize your productivity per square foot, zip grow is the way to go. And uh, there are of course exceptions to all of these different things. For more information to make better decisions, again, please check out the Upstart University course on different hydroponic techniques and why you should uh, be choosing one over another. So there are a lot of mistakes that you can and you probably will make on the front end of starting your first hydroponic system. Um, really simple ones are choosing the wrong system for your application or choosing the wrong crop for your system. However, the great thing about uh, hydroponics in general is that it's super, super flexible. And depending on what kind of a mistake it is, you can always go back and correct it. So whether that's changing your crop type or pulling out this plumbing and adding new plumbing or upsizing your pump or adding additional beds or what have you, there's always a way that you can fix the problem. So a lot of folks ask if they can do all of this themselves, and the general answer is yes, absolutely. When you're first starting out, it should be very, very easy for you to set up everything you need to get going growing. However, if you're trying to do this at a massive commercial scale, um, then you'll probably need some help. You'll need uh, planners, you'll need architects, you'll need contractors, you'll need all of those guys that it is required to implement on a very large scale. So think about the scale that you're trying to implement that and think about the time that you have, the money that you have, and whether or not it's worth getting some help. 
So if you're interested in starting your first hydroponic system, I would always start with a kit system or something that's very, very simple. There are tons of instructions online for very small, simple media-based systems. Now the one caveat is that the smaller the system, the easier it is for the system to get a little bit off kilter. And so designing up a little bit larger can sometimes help with stabilizing that system and making sure that you're successful right off the bat. If you guys wanna learn more information about this, please use the tools that we've been spending so much time and energy on for the last several years, including Upstart University and all of the coursework there, and Able.ag, it helps you design all of the economics around a commercial operation. So if you're just even thinking about it, check out Able.ag, it's free, it's easy to use, it's something that lets you design your own farm. As always guys, please subscribe. It is very, very useful to us to hear what you have to say about the content we're producing, and it's really, really hopefully useful to you you to get that content in a really timely and direct fashion. So thanks so much for engaging with us. Thanks so much for being part of our community.